What is going on, you beautiful people, and welcome back to another episode of the Upper 90 YouTube Soccer Channel. In today's video, we have to talk about none other than Harry Kane with what he's accomplished yesterday against San Marino. So stick around as we dive deeper into this. I don't know who I am. My name is Mike, huge fan of the Premier League. We are obviously still in international break with a few games still being able to play today, but we are going to be back to the Premier League this upcoming weekend. Today's video, though, we are talking about none other than Harry Kane and what he's accomplished with England because this is a huge milestone for any player, and obviously for England, this is a big stepping stone for him. Now, if you didn't see the game yesterday, England were obviously bullies against San Marino, which I'm not even sure why they play against this team or how it's even fair because they lost 10 nothing. San Marino, obviously. England put 10 goals past them, which reminds you that no one scores 11 goals past San Marino. That is a fact. But in this game, Harry Kane ended up scoring four goals, which brought him to, I think, 48 goals now, which puts him tied for third for England's most scored goals. He is now tied with Gary Linker, and this itself is a huge achievement. Now, there are two players above him, Charlton being the other guy, and Wayne Rooney, who is number one. And Harry Kane may be on the path to pass both those players up, probably not this season or this um, upcoming summer, but... If he's able to stick around for maybe another two years or so, he definitely can pass these players up. Now, it's not like he's scoring four goals each and every game because when they play harder opponents, he's obviously maybe scoring one or two goals. But the fact is, Harry Kane has scored 16 goals this year in 16 matches for England. Now, if you recall in the Euros, he did have a slow start to the tournament, but once he got things going, definitely found his gear and scored multiple goals. And the same thing can be said going into next summer with the World Cup coming up. If Gary or uh, if Harry Kane can find his gears right away, he could probably put maybe four or five goals in, which, like I said, will put him right there with Wayne Rooney, if not pass him at some point. Now, I don't see Harry Kane playing too many more games if England have any friendlies coming up because they obviously have secured and qualified for the World Cup in 2022 in Qatar. And I think if they're going to have players play now, I think they're going to rest some of these players like Harry Kane itself. They may break some up their youth players that maybe need a little bit more time because right now Southgate needs to figure out who exactly is going to be coming with England next summer. Harry Kane obviously being the captain for the three lines will definitely be there along with a few other players. But like I said, Southgate needs to figure out who he's going to add to the squad because they definitely have areas that they really need to focus on. Not so much the defense with the left wing and right wing. They got plenty of players there, but in the midfield and also on their left and right wings in the attacking third. Now, going back to Harry Kane, though, I want to talk about how this is such a black and white or 100%, 0%, because when he plays for England, he seems to be this shining star and scoring goals. He's now scored seven goals in his last two matches. And at Tottenham, he seems to be just a show of himself and can't seem to find the back of the net. Now, with that being said, we obviously know what happened with Harry Kane during the summer. He wanted out. That did not happen. Daniel Levy or someone on the board pretty much shut him down saying he wasn't going to be able to go even though they had a gentleman's agreement that Harry would be able to leave this past summer as we saw though that did not happen Manchester City obviously won him Pep Guardiola really was very key on him signing Harry Kane which would have been a huge plus to Manchester City because they lost Sergio Aguero and they don't really have a true number nine right now where Harry Kane definitely would have sit right there and scored multiple goals for Manchester City and be on pace to actually win a trophy. Now that being said, Tottenham though have signed Antonio Conte and as we know this coach is ruthless will score or have guys score multiple goals and has the potential to have Tottenham actually win a trophy. Now probably not going to be the Premier League itself this season the way Tottenham have been going and the likes of Chelsea, Liverpool and Manchester City are already pretty high up. Tottenham to catch them up is going to be a big task for any manager including Conte. 
Now, if he would have been there in the beginning of the season, that would have been a whole different story. But after 11 matches, it's going to be very difficult for Conte to catch up. So that really pretty much leaves FA Cup and League Cup where Tottenham could possibly do really well. But as we've seen Tottenham do time and time again is bottle when they come to the finals. Maybe Conte can get him past that last hurdle, but who knows. What he needs though to do is get Harry Kane on the same rhythm that he is on when he plays for England. I'm not sure what Southgate beats Harry during the game or after the game or before the game. But like I said, when he plays for England, he is definitely a different player. And maybe this will change with Conte being there that maybe he can get that fire going, the passion back for Harry Kane at Tottenham because when Nuno was there, Harry just did not care what he was doing on the pitch. Pretty much just kind of jogged around, didn't do a whole lot, did score one goal so far in 10 matches, which for Harry's standards is very, very poor. Last year, as we saw, he was the top goal scorer and the top assister. Right now, he's not even close to being on that pace. With Conte being there, it could be a little bit different. He could start scoring some of these goals and start chalking up a few goals here and there and eventually get back to that pace. But like I said, being 11 games into the season already, that's quite a few matches that he's already missed on where he should have been scoring goals. Yes, they played some harder opponents, but they've also played a few easier opponents where he should have been scoring goals. Now, like I said, though, with Conte, he definitely gets the best of all his players, though he is, like I said, ruthless and definitely can bench certain players will he bench harry kane i don't see that happening right off the bat if harry kane stops producing i think if he gets him on the right page along with all the other players that they can really have a force in their attacking third in the fence they still need to work on which players are going to be there it seems like ben davis might be one of the guys that Conte really enjoys. I think Eric Dyer is another guy. After that, it's really up in the air because all those positions, you have so many different options. And like I said, with a new manager, different players seem to shine and we will see what happens with Tottenham. But like I said, with Harry Kane right now, it just is a different story between England and Tottenham. As a Chelsea fan, I'm not too sure if I want to see him do as well as he's done for England. But at the same time, I really like the player he is on my fantasy team, so that makes me a little biased when I talk about Harry Kane. So obviously I want him to score more and more goals, just not against Chelsea or pass Chelsea up at any point in this season, which again, I don't see happening. I may be upset if that does happen. I may eat my words just saying that, but we will see. Now, like I said, I want to congratulate Harry Kane on his achievement being number three in the all-time goal scorer for England. Like I said, I see him passing up the next player and possibly catching up to Wayne Rooney, not this year or this season, but most likely next year during maybe the World Cup, which, like I said, could be a huge achievement along with England maybe making the final again, question mark. Obviously, the World Cup is a little harder to make to the final. A lot more teams, a lot more variables than the Euros, but the fact that England finally reached the final, that may give the hunger to these players, especially Harry Kane, who still hasn't won a trophy, to really go out there and win and step over that last hurdle to lift a trophy for England. So that is all I have for you today. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. I greatly appreciate that. Helps grow this YouTube channel, helps get this video to more and more fans such as yourself. And if you haven't, comment down below what you think about Harry Kane with him playing for England and for Tottenham this season. I'm really curious to see what you think. So that is it, and I will see you next time.